you expect me to be in the center, but I'm not really built for center stage. You see, the world tells me that I was made to dwell in the margins. So your inability to see me isn't a new experience for me. It's the very definition of being marginal. In fact, there are entire communities of people that the world fails to see because they too dwell in the margins. People whose humanity is doubted or at best questioned. People whose human value is defined by their race or sex or economic standing. And because we fail to meet some standard set by those in the center, we are left to the margins. The margins, that place where those who are deemed unworthy are relegated. The margins, that place where you embrace who and what you are, but you often find yourself alone. The margins, that place where you experience a visceral pain when the world tells you, you are not enough. And you realize that in order to be enough, you have to become a fundamentally different person than who you are. I know some of you understand what I'm saying because you too dwell in the margins, invisible, ignored. As someone who was born poor, black, and a woman, the margins are my genesis, my shelter, and my place of nourishment. And because I come from and now choose the margins, I have had to learn how to navigate life and leadership differently than someone who comes from or primarily locates themselves within the center. Yes, I have had to learn how to be center stage, how to stand in the limelight, how to look and act and lead like someone acceptable in the center. But in my heart, in my spirit, even in my center-centric leadership, I choose the margins. What compels me to the margins? What sustains me in the margins? What enables me to resist this center? Defiance. Now, for anyone who knows me, they'll find that statement somewhat ironic. By all appearances, I'm the least defiant person you will meet. I believe in the inherent goodness of human beings. I am the ultimate rule follower. My family calls me Pollyanna. <laughs> and yet, it is defiance that enables me to dwell in the margins and embrace those in the margins with me. So what led to such a defiant spirit? Well, picture it. It's the mid-1980s, junior high school, career assessment day. Now, at that point in my life, standardized test anything was my strong suit. I could dominate a bubble sheet, and I looked forward to the task. In fact, I envisioned my junior high school classmates lauding me for my career assessment prowess. At long last, they would realize that I was more than a jerry curl and severely crossed eyes. So I gather up my bubble sheet, a test booklet, and a number two pencil and I prepare to excel. With the sniff of that paper, I tore open the bubble sheet, and I began. Name, address, telephone number. And then, perhaps the most transformative question I've encountered, what are your parents' titles? Mr. and Mrs., Mr., Mrs., Miss, Ms., or finally, Dr. and Mrs. Now let me be clear, the actual answer was quite easy. My mother was proudly Mrs. Robert Hinton. Though my father had died a few years before this experience, Mrs. was the correct answer. 
And to be honest, at this point in my life in rural North Carolina, I had not heard the words womanist or feminist. I knew nothing about the feminist movement. But I did know something was fundamentally wrong with that list. It completely left off the option of doctor and mister as if that were some sort of impossibility. I spent the entire test time thinking about this injustice and what I was going to do about it. Suffice it to say, my career assessment results were less than stellar, and there was no lauding. <laughs> Quite powerfully, this early experience began to shape my self-understanding as a woman and gave birth to my defiant spirit. You see, it was at that moment that I realized that not only were society's expectations for women different, but that women were defined largely in comparison to men. The margins defined in comparison to the center. I realized at that moment that I was being taught to define myself against society's expectations. I knew then that that's not what I wanted for my life, and my defiant spirit hasn't looked back since. And as a leader, recognizing how women are perceived is essential as we lead, develop, and nurture others. A recent study asked people to picture a leader. They found that when asked to describe a leader, both men and women described a leader as a man. Think about that for a moment. A margin gets drawn just by being a woman because we're not who's typically pictured as a leader. And as a result, women have less access to leadership development opportunities. And when women do make it into leadership roles, we're held to a nearly impossible standard. A study of performance evaluations found that women leaders are often given feedback that they are either not womanly enough in their approach or too womanly to be taken seriously as a leader. What a losing proposition. So how can we, as a society, look beyond this center and see the humanity of those in the margins who can lead in new, effective, and creative ways? Can you peek into the margins and see whom you've defined against the center that you need to view more fully and with greater complexity. Now, the bubble sheet moment was a big one for me. But had I known then what I know now, I would have known that another moment of self-definition and defiance wouldn't be too far behind. You see, growing up, poor and black in the rural South in the 1970s and 80s was a difficult experience. Very few people of color could afford to be racially defiant. If we attempted to buck the standards set by those in the center, we were asked, who do you think you are? Or explicitly told, get back in your place. For example, when I was in 10th grade, I decided to ask my then high school guidance counselor to help me think through how I could go to college. My mother had told me that education was our only way out of poverty. And to this day, nearly 35 years later, I can still remember the tableau in that counselor's office. What I remember most clearly is that she had to look up at me in order to make eye contact. And as she made eye contact, she explained to me that as a black woman, college was not an option for me. She essentially told me that my place in the world had been determined by others and that it was my job to accept that place. Her goal in that conversation was not to help me envision success, not to mention pursue success, her goal in that conversation was to ensure my success was small and that my hopes were even smaller. She sought to reduce me. She wanted to use the margins to punish me. And for far too many days, weeks, 
months, years, she was successful. For far too long, I viewed that encounter as a failure on my part, when in reality, the failure was hers. In the most generous assessment, she simply failed to imagine someone from the margins, a black woman, being successful. And that failure of imagination is not hers alone. Who have we as a society failed to imagine as a success simply because they come from the margins? But even as she spewed her vitriol, I chose to be defiant, to view the margins as a source of strength as opposed to a source of sorrow. I knew that because of the margins, I had to make a way, not to get to this coveted center, but to get through this center to reach, embrace, and uplift others on the margins with me. And I needed that spirit of defiance then, and I need it now as a leader. You see, leaders from the margins are viewed as equal parts necessary and threatening. I say necessary because there's fairly widespread acknowledgement of the lack or underrepresentation of women and people of color in leadership roles. Women lead only 6% of Fortune 500 companies, despite making up more than 50% of the U.S. workforce. But I also use the word threatening. You see, some view leaders from the margin as less than. The value attached to leaders from the margins can be destabilizing or threatening for their entire organization. And here's what I mean. A study of more than 1,000 top executives at large to mid-sized public companies in the U.S. found that white male managers' sense of identity with the company was diminished following the appointment of a female or racial minority CEO. Leaders from the margins are viewed as a compromise for others. So leaders from the margins have to defy what the world sets before us, so we burrow deeper into the margins. We struggle to hold ourselves to a standard of excellence that's defined by us, not by the center. But that defiance can't be done alone. For me, my defiance in the margins was done with my mother, who with her eighth grade education ensured her daughters received a college education. It was done with the family my mother cleaned for, who used their resources from this center to take my hand in the margins and pay for me to attend a school where people believed in my academic ability. So I ask each of us, how can we elevate others, leaders, leaders from the margins, by simply recognizing that their leadership gifts aren't despite the margins, but because of the margins? You see, margins are often thought of as extra or dispensable space, and the people who dwell in the margins are equally readily dismissed. But here's the thing. On the most important documents and decrees in history, we find margins. We honor language and words and ideas by framing them with a margin. Some choose to view margins as boundaries and constraints, but margins could just as easily be viewed as a roadmap for upward and forward movement. At their best, margins beckon to us and unleash us. We have, in fact, a responsibility 
to see those who dwell in the margins, to value the voices and experiences and humanity of those who others may see as marginal or fringe. Leading from the margins means developing an ability to move not only toward the center, but through this center to reach others on the margins. Now that work of defiance in the margins has to be done with all of us. How can you, with a hopeful and defiant spirit, and from wherever you locate yourself, help deconstruct the center so that you too can see the beauty of all who surround us in the margins. My life, my leadership, my calling is based in the margins. My spirit was born and shaped on the margins. I dwell by choice in marginal spaces. Please join me. Mm -hmm.